coming to the stage, I can clearly see that the largest portion of this audience are youth. So, I want to start with one question. What is the one thing every teenager wants to have? An attractive look? An expensive outfit? A brand new car? Or maybe even a famous partner, who knows, right? Partially, all of these answers are correct, but the most accurate answer would be attention. Years ago, when I was a little kid, I used to be at the center of attention. And the source of my attention was not how sweet kid I was. In fact, I was a very cute one, but the reason for this attention was my out of the ordinary style of thinking and consistently orig original thoughts. That's why around two years ago, I started to realize that I no longer thought in a way I once did. The people were not interested to my ideas. And the saddest part was everything occurred throughout my teenage years. I felt like total failure, but the fact I hate failure inspired me to try to reclaim my creativity. So I started to conduct research. I read around 50 articles, watched more than 20 videos, and at the end, it was useless. I felt nothing. But one day, as I sat on a couch, feeling like a total loser, it dawned on me. It dawned on me that one, art, one expression appeared in nearly every article I read and the video I watched. So, I believed this was the key to rediscover my creativity. Can you guess this expression? I think most of you, if not all of you, familiar with the idiom thinking outside the box, right? So, now I knew or I believed that I should think outside the box. But there was a one little problem. I had no idea what the box actually was. So that's why I switched my topic of my research from how to reclaim your creativity to the box. After my initial Google search, I realized that this wouldn't be easy. Do you want to know what I saw? I saw Mike Tyson punching a random guy. Oh my god. So that moment, I thought, oh, what should I do? I wanted to give up, but I didn't. I continued doing research, and after conducting enough research, everything pointed out box as a comfort zone. But I wasn't satisfied with it either, because you can go outside of your comfort zone, you can accomplish things outside of your comfort zone, but thinking outside of your comfort zone, it sounds odd. So I started to examine it on my own. I tried different things. None of them worked, but one day, while sitting in a normal, regular math class, solving various Venn diagram problems, I did it. I suddenly screamed, I did it! And everybody, including teachers, looked at me very strangely, so I politely apologized and took some notes to my notebook, and today I want to share that discovery with you. Let's say every one of us own one big circle that contains our knowledge. And these circles intersect when we communicate with someone. While making conversation, our circle intersects with another person's circle. And together, it creates a Venn diagram. The section where the circles intersect is what I call, is what I call the box. And the other sections of the circle is what I call outside the box. In a simpler words, what I and my friend knows, we both know, is the box. And what I only I know is outside the box. Pretty simple, huh? To, to be outside the box, I should simply talk about things that only I know and my friend doesn't know. Hmm. But it becomes more complicated when someone else joins the conversation, the box automatically becomes bigger and being outside the box becomes harder. The more people involved in the conversation, the harder it gets. But the concept is the same. 
I should talk about things only I know. So I have the pretty good theory, and that's why I started to observe it in the real world. And while doing these observations, I faced some special cases, like one small circle lies entirely inside one big one, one big circle. In this case, the owner of the small box, small circle, can sit outside the box because his everything he knows lies entirely in other person's circle. The more he tries to be outside the box, the more stupid he looks to the person who owns the larger circle. Or I saw different special cases like two circles never intersect with, uh, with each other and these two people always argue just because they don't have a common ground. Uh, and also, while doing observations, I found out that the people who always are all inside the box end up living an average, everyday, ordinary life. And the people who are always outside the box end up in mental hospitals. The truly successful people are the people who can switch places. And that is what I naturally did years ago when I was a kid. I just went outside the box to come up with some crazy ideas and I could explain it in simpler words while coming inside the box and using common knowledge. To support my point, let's take Elon Musk as an example. He's one of the wealthiest men on earth. When you look at his future plans, they're very crazy, like creating life on Mars or putting microchips in the human brain. When you think about people who has that kind of ideas, future plans, you think that this people, this man, should be in mental hospital. You think that he is stupid. But when you listen his conversation with others while explaining his point, he's just as ordinary people, he's just as ordinary man, just like others. He can go outside of the box to come up with something new and explain it in simpler words. And for that, he has two things that helps him to do this. He can naturally switch places and he has a bigger circle compared to the most people on Earth. So, when, you, when we go back to one of his interviews, he said he was raised by books. He finished Encyclopedia Britannica when he was nine years old. So he has a bigger circle. So he has an advantage. To really think outside of the box, you should have a bigger circle and know how to switch places. To summarize, to conclude everything I said, I just want to say, start and never stop expanding your circle by learning new knowledge and never putting limitations to yourself. Thank you for your attention.